hello alls, welcome to day three of the Mirror Economy Marathon and my second vlog. So, um, I could this at the end of my last vlog, but basically I am splitting up my vlogs by book that I'm reading. So, last vlog was all about After Dark, and this vlog is going to be all about Kafka on the Shore. I started reading this a little bit last night, I just read like the first chapter or two just to get a feel of the story. I honestly don't even know what this is about, and I'm already so fucking hooked. I'm relating hardcore to our main character so far. I like this weird other character that might not be a real character. I don't know. I don't know yet. Um, I'm already like highlighting a fucking bunch. There's a lot of things I'm just like, wow, I feel this. His writing is so fucking beautiful. And like, this is like a full, full length, like long er novel compared to the other two I have read from. They're very short. So I'm like, dude, this is going to be so fucking beautiful. I already can tell. But also look at this fucking font and like this um format. And like it's all the way to the top. All the way to the I'm like, what the fuck? The other ones I read were like a thicker font. But um, basically, I don't know if I'm going to read any today today's a very very busy day um a lot of like end of the year stuff for my younger siblings so like i was just at an assembly for my little sister and then my younger brother is um promoting from eighth grade into high school and so we have that later tonight i'll try to read more today probably won't happen until very very late at night and that's only if i'm not fucking dead after the long day but uh um happy reading I'm very excited to start this. I think this is going to be like a fucking fave. I I said about all of his books though. I go in with like really high expectations. I'm all I don't know. Something about it, but his writing is very beautiful and I'm very excited. So, catch you later. Ayo, hey, so it is Sunday the 16th, which is the start of week 2 of the Mirror High Marathon, and I haven't read since like Monday night when I told you I read like 13 pages or something of Kafka on the show I haven't read anymore. Life's just been really chaotic and crazy and I just haven't, one, I haven't had the time to read but I'm also just not, you know? You know, you just can't read sometimes, you can't focus on things because shit. But I think I'm gonna take a break because that's very dense and like I don't really, I'm not really, I don't know if I can concentrate that long. So I think I'm just gonna pick up Fun Home by Alison Bechdel. I'm going to graphic memoir and it's queer read it for pride month i know these are supposed to be about like the actual readathon and mirakami but like i figured might as well just talk about other shit i'm reading alongside because like it's my vlog i know kate does that too and she's been doing that for these vlogs so i'll read that hopefully that'll get me back into like a mindset where i'm like oh yes reading i can focus and then i can start kafka tonight again get into it actually and actually read a Mirakami during the readathon. So we'll see. Hello, it is now Monday the 17th. Yes. And um, last night I did end up finishing Fun Home by Alison Bechdel. And um, this was so hard to give a rating to on Goodreads. Because, well, one, it's like a memoir. So, like, how do you judge someone else's life? But also, when it's like a queer book i just want to give it all the stars especially when it's someone like alice Bechdel, who's so fucking important and influential in the lgbt community and like feminism and everything she's so fucking important she gives a fucking Bechdel test like what a woman but I, it's not that this wasn't what i was expecting necessarily and that sounds really shitty to say because like oh it's her fucking life and there were aspects of it that were really fucking interesting that didn't have to deal with the queer shit and when it focused on the queer shit, I was like, yes, this is fucking awesome. But I don't know, I felt like there were parts that were a little tedious, parts that just kind of didn't add anything. And then there, it was so wrapped up in these, like, comparisons to, like, literature and all this shit. Like, um, F. Scott Fitzgerald and all these, like, shit like that. And, like, I only got, like, about, like, a third to a half of the references. Some of them, I was just like, yeah, I've never read this, I don't fucking know shit about this. And it didn't really help me feel anything to it but i get it it was a way to keep the readers at an arm's length from her story because that's how she felt with her father so it always felt like there was that disconnect and that was a way that they were able to actually bond in the end and shit and i mean i liked it i did i just i loved just hearing her story hearing when she was a kid and like learning about sexuality and like gender expression like the first time she sees like a very butch woman lesbian and i'm like wow because it's like you know it's very like common in any queer person's history and journey and story so like that's really cool to see um it was very like heartbreaking at times and very funny it really fucked me up like seeing 
how much her and her father could have bonded over and could have had in common, but they didn't, they couldn't, you know? Like, they just, they, there was, it was a disconnect between the two, and it was so long, it had been built so long from, like, fucking her birth to, like, the, when her father finally died, that it was never gonna, they weren't gonna bridge that gap, so. Like, that's really sad, that kind of fucked me up, but it was, it was good, it was fine. I'm very happy I read it, obviously. Fucking, this is a queer classic. Everyone should read this. But, yeah. So, um, I finished out really late at night, and so I didn't pick up Kafka. But I started kind of reading a little bit. Today, I'm only, like, on page, like, 20. But I was like, oh, hey, Kafka on the shore. Is, like, our main character gonna read Kafka at the beach or something? Like, is that gonna happen? Like, is that, is there some sort of illusion? But no, I read the back in... <laughs> The main character's name was Kafka, and I was like, oh, well, there goes my pretentious card. Anyway, I'm just gonna continue reading. Alright, so it's later in the night, and I have finally been reading some Kafka and, um, some thoughts so far. Uh, I finally encountered a talking cat. Was alright. I was like, is he talking? Is this happening? I go, hell yeah. Um, he's very wordy, and I feel like a little tedious some of his stuff, just like, mm, okay. Also, with our main character, is he gonna think every single female he meets is either his mother or his sister, and if any fucking goddamn incest shit, or low-key incest, I don't give a fuck, if any of that shit happens, I'm bouncing, I can't, that's fucking, no. There's more, um woman shit where they're just dumb because he meets the one chick and she's like what's that one phrase like and then he'll say and she's like um yeah but like in simple terms or like um can you explain this and like oh wow yeah she can't know anything of course because she is a woman but um so far actually i'm more intrigued with like the reports from like the fbi shit that's going on i'm so intrigued with that fuck everything else fuck kafka i'm currently on page 61 i'm gonna read for a little bit more and see where the night takes me. I... I said, I don't want no fucking... I don't care if it's a low-key. I don't fucking care. I don't want no weird incest shit going on. And what the fuck goes on? We don't know that they're siblings, and it doesn't matter that they're fucking not related. It's still weird. <laughs> okay, well, it happened. It's the next day, guys. We learned that Nakata is the boy from before, and the whole incident shit that happened cool talking to more cats but motherfucking motherfucking what's his name fucking kafka this bitch this bitch passes out is that whole weird memory shit that happened like the kid right cool parallel shit but then he's with that girl sakura you know just doing normal shit and it's like she's talking to him about his sister and then it's like how old would your sister be blah blah, blah. oh my god and she then she fucking jerks him off and shit and i'm like okay and there's and then after that happened, she's like, wow, really wish I was your sister. And he's like, same. And I go, <laughs> why? I just want to know why. I just, does that kind of weird sex? A low key could be incest fucking weird shit. Is that weird sex in the fucking bingo board? Cause fuck this. God damn. Jeez. Okay. Okay. Things took a turn. Let me let me tell you where I am real, real quick. I'm on 181 of Kafka on the Shore. And I'm kind of like, it's very tedious. I don't know what the point of half this is. One of the things in it connect, because we got like some things like um, Nakata is the child from like the school thing. And then like the time when Kafka passes out and it's kind of similar to the thing. But it's like, when are they going to fucking connect? And we got a lot of annoying fucking stupid issues. There's a lot of things that just didn't really like, I'm like, what's the point? But we just learned that Oshima... Oshima, she, she, she identifies as a female, I'm assuming, I mean, I hate to say I'm assuming, but, like, I'm, I, she says she's a female, so we just learned that she's intersex, I need to, I'm gonna reread what I just, what the, what she just explained, but I'm pretty positive that she's saying she's intersex, she has the, um, female sex, I guess, anatomical shit, she has a vagina, she says her boobs aren't really, you know, out there or anything, but, like, she doesn't, her, um, clitoris is very, uh, 
sensitive and all this shit, which is a thing with, like, a lot of... I've read a book, too, once about this, but, like, I've never found good intersex representation. Um, I never see... I've never read it from the point of view or written by an intersex author, so I'm very... Like, that's something I've been meaning to look into for a long time. And that came out of nowhere. Like, I was like, oh, maybe... She's like, I'm not, um a male and all this shit and I go oh maybe is it like a trans thing what's going on I was like very curious and then um she explained it more and I go oh my god is she just intersex she says she does not I'm sorry if this is like um TMI or anything I mean it's in the fucking book if you're in the fucking book and pe I just know people get all like eh, talking about dumb shit but she says that she doesn't have vaginal sex she just does anal sex because her vagina is very um sensitive and all this shit but which is a thing a lot of intersex people can't have um, if you are born presenting female with female anatomical shit going on down there, um, and, like, the genitalia, they can't have, um, vaginal sex all the time because it's not actually, you know, <laughs> it's not, I don't know proper terms, and I'm not, like, a doctor, and I'm not an intersex person myself, so I don't want to speak in terms of everything and act like I know everything, because I obviously don't, because I am not that, but that's actually so fucking interesting. It's very weird. I need to know. Has. No, wait. But. So does. Do they. Does Oshima. They say that they're not. They say that they're definitely female. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm so sorry if I've been. Okay. Okay. Let me, I'm so sorry if I've been misgendering them this whole time. Because I was like, wait a second. They're still, Kafka is still referring to Oshima as a he, him sort of thing. But there's a part here that says, My body is physically female, but my mind's completely male. Oshima goes on. Emotionally, I live as a man, so I suppose your notion of being a historical example may be correct. And maybe I am sexist, who knows. But I'm not a lesbian, even though I dress this way. My sexual preference is for men. In other words, I'm a female, but I'm gay. I do anal sex and have never used my vagina for sex. My clitoris is sensitive, but my breasts aren't. I don't have a period, so what am I discriminated against? Could somebody tell me? That's the other thing. A lot of um, people who are intersex, who have the female anatomy, don't have periods. It's a thing. So, I'm very, very curious then. Because they're saying they have a completely male mind. But then they still say that they are a female and they're saying that they're I'm gonna I'm just using their because I don't want to actually misgender misgender very badly it says I'm a female but I'm gay so are they I'm I feel awful trying to categorize them too into a thing like are you a man are you a woman but it's throwing me because they're saying he um they're saying yeah I'm a woman I am this I'm this but still being referred to with he, him pronouns. And that's throwing me. But the way it's described, it's making me read it as this is an intersex human being, regardless of gender expression, intersex. Which is very, very cool, unless there's some other deep shit that um, Mirakami has not actually um researched and studied and is being a completely fucking ignorant asshole about certain things and gender and sexuality and just sex and anatomy and shit i'm very very intrigued i'm gonna read more i'm gonna see what's going on okay i don't want to like make it everything about fucking what's <laughs> is it oshima and like be like ah you gotta put them in a fucking category but i just they literally just refer to them saying I know I'm a hopeless, damaged, homosexual woman, but Kafka's still using he, him pronouns. And now, I don't... Like, they're referring to themselves as a woman, but I just don't know if... I just... The reason this is making me uncomfortable why I keep picking at it is because I don't know if um, Mirakami is just being an ignorant, fucking stupid... Uh, you know, like, he just doesn't understand what the fuck he's saying and that's very ignorant i don't like that you know i just but um anyway so i'm like past page 200 i don't know what time it is but um i just let's talk about some other things real quick so a theme that i've seen 
so far in Mirakami books is this whole trying to escape something, especially something from your past, and everybody being like, you can't run away from that kind of stuff. So, like, we just learned that Kafka, there's, like, a curse that his dad put on him, and he's, like, him trying to run away from it, but he's like, maybe I can't. And the parallels between him and, um, Nakata, Nakata, um, like, when he woke up, oh, also, yeah, I kind of guessed, I was, I had some theories, I was like, is the dude that Nakata killed is the dad, I kind of felt it, but I just want to know, like, if certain things, well, like, the fish rain down true, because everybody fucking knew it, but, like, I want to know if certain things that the, um, Nakata is seen doing, if that's just in his mind, or if that's really how it's happening, you know, in the world, and then it just happens to be, like, different, you, you know what I mean, but, um, the parallels between that, like, when his father dies and he ends up, when he blacks out and has all the blood and shit. So, like, there's those parallels and shit. Like, are they the same person? But, um, the past thing. You're talking about he's running away from his, um, the past, or he's trying to run away from his curse or whatever. But then it's also, whether, well, like, hey, you gotta, like, when they tell him about his father dying, he was like, um, I think you have a right to live however you want. Whether you're 15 or 51, what does it matter? But unfortunately, society doesn't agree. So let's say you don't explain anything to anybody. You'll be constantly on the run from the police and society. Your life will be pretty hard. So you're only 15 with your whole life ahead of you. You're okay with that? So it's just constant having to be on the run, trying to escape something, like something literal like that, like something that's actually, you know, happening. And then the same thing here. When I first met you, I felt a kind of contradiction in you. You're seeking something, but at the same time running away for all your worth. It's just like that weird, like, you're trying to escape. And that's the whole point of the entire book. Kafka is getting, trying to get away from something. And that's kind of like, oh shit, dude, what be happening? What be happening? There's also a lot of talk about free will, I guess is what I would call it. Consider it in a very f like figurative and literal sense. So like, I think it's best shown with Nakata when he's fucking <laughs> murdering the fucking cat dude, um, Kafka's dad, I guess. Um. And so, it's this line, I know you've never killed anyone and don't want to, but listen to me, there are times in life those kind of excuses don't cut anymore. Situations when nobody cares whether you're suited for the task at hand or not. I need you to understand that. For instance, it happens in war. Do you know what war is? When a war starts, people are forced to become soldiers. They carry guns and go to the front lines and have to kill soldiers on the other side, as many as they possibly can. Nobody cares whether you like killing other people or not. It's just something you have to do, otherwise you're the one who gets killed. Johnny Walker pointing the index finger in Nakata's chest. Bang. Human history in a nutshell. So I feel that that's a big, big topic in this book. There's a lot of talk about um, free will in like that literal sense where like he, the decisions you're making aren't really your own decisions, like in like the actual like real life situation like that, where he's like, cause then Nakata loses the control and he can't help it and he has to kill him. And it's sort of this, that weird thing again, where um, Kafka passed out and he couldn't help it and all this stuff. But then again, um, there's a line when what is it? What's the kid called? Crow. Crow, Crow, Crow. Like, um, Kafka's, like, inner conscience and mind, like, the mean side of him that tells him, like, you're fucking stupid. There's, a um, this line, um, but that calm won't last long, you know. It's like beasts that never tire, tracking you everywhere you go. They come out at you deep in the forest. They're tough, relentless, merciless, untiring, and they never give up. You might control yourself now and not masturbate, but they'll get you in the end as a wet dream. You might dream about raping your sister or your mother. It's not something you can control. It's a power beyond you, and all you can do is accept it. You're afraid of imagination and even more afraid of dreams, afraid of the responsibility that begins in dreams. But you have to sleep, and dreams are a part of sleep. When you're awake, you can suppress imagination, but you can't suppress dreams. Again, that's this whole concept that your, your mind is your own prison. There's no free will. You can't help what your subconscious thinks and dreams up and so you're never really in control of yourself and your thoughts and actions and things which is a really cool concept I really like that because I think free will is that's a very big topic for lots of in lots of different sections you want to go but then I guess this but then now that we learn about the prophecy it makes a lot of sense his whole like why he's so caught up like with um Sakura and like the fucking hand job he got I guess it makes sense because the whole thing is he's supposed to fucking sleep with his fucking sister and mom, so like that's a weird thing, and it's kind of showing, I guess, all this sexual shit. He does throw that in there a lot. <laughs> the weird, like, he, the kids just want to masturbate all the time, and I'm like, I get it, you're 15. I don't know, 15 year old me 
was the same. No, because at the time I was like, why do I like boys and girls? And why is my body not the way it's supposed to be? And then like a lot of suppression. So I don't think I was um, this, but yeah, it's cool. We're getting more connections intermingled and shit and some cool topics discussed. I'm still very like, some of it's tedious. We're finally, it's finally connecting though, which is what I've been waiting for this whole time. Like things to meet. So hopefully it will get less tedious, I guess is the word I keep saying, but we'll see. All right, it's like midnight now, so I'm gonna stop reading for a bit. Might read more into the night. I don't know, because I just want this, just want shit to happen. Like, I feel like this whole time right now, I'm just waiting for it, for them to like come together, because it's like, looking for the interest on this part of the song, like things are like connecting, but like, I feel like we're leading up to something and I go, okay, like, can it happen now, please? I feel like, He's just like going on, you know? And I'm like, some of it's like interesting, obviously. And other parts I'm just like, yeah, I don't care. But my one thing is I'm on 263 right now, chapter 27, that's where I'm stopping for today. It, why is it Colonel Sanders? Why is it the KFC dude that comes to Hoshino or Hoshima? Was it an N or an M? Hoshino. Why, why Colonel Sanders of all figures and people and things that could be the fucking fucking fairy godmother of the fucking third dimension, whatever the fuck it is. Oh my Colonel Sanders, that's so ridiculous. That fucking shit was like, what the fuck? Okay, Mirakami, okay. Anyway, there's only, um, today's, well, it's just 20, so we have the 20th, 21st, 22nd. So I have three days left to the readathon. Only read one book. I'm like more than halfway with this. I'm gonna hopefully finish it and 100% gonna get to, um, what I want to talk about writing. Don't know about the Wind of Bird Chronicle, that's a big boy. So, we'll see, fam. We'll see. Alright, so I have about, like, just over 100 pages left of Kafka on the Shore. Well, what are some thoughts? What has happened? I don't remember the last time I checked in. Okay, here's my- here's a little tidbit for you here. So, Nakata is mentally challenged. He had that whole accident, and he lost everything, memory, and fucking his ability to read and write and do everything, so he's been, you know, having some issues. And- you know, uh, he's trying to, like, realize, like, hey, I'm empty. There's something after that. I'm missing a piece of me, and I want that back and all this shit. So that's, like, this whole point in the fucking stone and all this shit. Like, he wants to regain that. And now he just started talking to, like, first person because he always says, Nakata this, Nakata. Like, he refers himself as Nakata. But he was flipping back and forth now saying I and speaking in first person. And the thing is, well, my favorite book of all time, Flowers for All John, is about a mentally challenged man who goes and gets some tests and stuff done to him to make him like intelligent and like a normal citizen and all this dumb shit. And then you see his growth and how he starts becoming intelligent, I guess. And then you see the degradation of his brain again as he goes back to how he was at the beginning of the book. So you think I would be all on top of this shit, like fuck yeah and this like cool concept, but I just can't. I can't care about some of these characters and the shit they're going through because I just, I feel like I've been waiting and waiting and waiting and it's just like he goes off on the other shit and I just don't care. That's my issue I think with this book. I can't seem to make myself care. It's making me just like, ugh, not being able to get through it as quickly as I would have liked to. I don't know. Also, what is the legal way to consent in Japan because motherfucking 15 year old Kafka and like the 50 year old fucking Jesus Christ. Also, he started talking like second person when he was being the other dude or whatever. You know, just dumb, weird shit. So I have like 50-ish pages left of this, and um, what has happened? Shit's like, it's like, you, I just want things to finally just come together and be like done. And it's like, we're kind of getting it, but then it like doesn't, and then it's like, uh. So, um, there's been some deaths. If Kafka doesn't die, I'm going to be so fucking upset. Please just fucking kill him. Also, I love this whole, I'm gonna take my life into my own hands and fuck my sister. Whether that was really a dream or not, and then they have all these parallels about dreams being real and all this shit. I don't know, it just keeps going on. And like, I think it's just, uh, like, that's the thing though, there are interesting bits within it, and there's parts that I really like and stuff. I just feel like he boggles it down with a lot of shit that I just can't care about, and it makes me feel detached from the characters. Oh, one thing, one thing, he's, um, Kafka's talking about when his mom, how his mom left me, like, how can she love me if she left me and all this shit, and he's talking about, like, her and love and all this stuff, and then Crow is, like, in her fucking 
conscious person thing, whatever the fuck, is like alter ego, is like saying like, well, you have to forgive her and forget, and you can't turn bitter because of all this dumb shit, and it's like, it happened, just like, you have to forgive her, and like, it's too late for her, but you still have a chance, I just think that's kind of bullshit, like, yeah, I get it, things happened, and you can't change what happened, but Something like this, like, no, 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 you have the right to be angry, you can be upset at the world, but then there's also a line where it says you don't want to repeat the same, something like that, I don't want to fucking look for it, and it's a thing, because children, I'm not gonna, like, air out my whole, like, family thing here, but it's a big thing where you don't want to, well, it's just any child, anyway, it doesn't matter how you grew up, but there's a lot of times, like, you don't want to grow up like your parents like I would say I only want children so I can show them what a good parent is supposed to be and like like you know like try to rectify for the way I was raised and grew up and all this shit like it's very weird but like I like that but on another sense I'm like nah fuck that shit like this I just don't want it to be some like cheesy like oh my god you found self inner something within yourself and all this shit and I go no that's fucking gay as fuck bitch I'm using gay I can use gay however I want it. I'm fucking gay, so fuck you. I think that's stupid. And I just, like, no, just kill everybody, please. All right, so I finally finished Kafka on the Shore. I'm gonna try to make this very short. A lot of my thoughts still holds the same from all my other updates. Basically, I really, really thought this was gonna be... I always say this. I always think his book's gonna be different, but the thing is, he goes on about a lot of different things and a lot of different parts of the people's lives and dumb shit that I'm just like, it didn't add anything. It made me, it just made it like tiring to get through at times. But he also like would throw in these random shit like all these facts about like Beethoven for some paragraphs. It's like, okay, we get it, cool, you know facts. Like, oh, what do you want, a fucking cookie? Like, I don't care, that's not adding anything. I think it, the same with like After Arc and shit, it's a lot about like, can't run away from your past, you have to confront this shit, like, Time's always it's moving, bitch. You can't like run away from it, which is cool and interesting. Like the thing is, this could have been so cool and interesting. It had a lot of different elements, but it got so boggled down with all this shit I didn't care about. I did like was it Hoshino? Hoshino. I fucking thought of all the characters, he's the one. His like transformation was the only one that felt genuine and was like intriguing. I felt like was fucking Kafka. I felt like. Oh yeah, at the end, he's like, I'm gonna go back home, I can't keep running away. I still felt like he was, like, I mean, I guess because he's 15, but he still just felt, like, dumb and idiotic and annoying and all this shit, and, like, everybody else, same. Oh, all, um, other things, um, that weird parallel world where, like, he's, when he meets the soldiers and all this shit and things, um, when he's with the other, the 15-year-old Miss Saiki, Saiki, I don't want to say her name wrong, that's so funny, we're like, well, he, I'm like, can, even if it's not technically the same, like it doesn't have all the memories on the shit, it's a different thing. It's still your mom. It's still your mom. I don't, I, I don't, and then when he was treating her mom's blood, I'm like, that shit's so fucking stupid. It was just kind of, it just kind of felt like, why, why, you know? Um, I gave this three stars. Something that I want to talk about, again, I'm going to keep bringing this up. I want to give it less stars because I felt very, um, uh, personally offended personally offended by motherfucking Oshima still because the thing is I don't want to be like some fucking crazy SCW oh my god like fucking transphobic idiotic shit but the thing is if it would have just been one Oshima was like well actually fucking you stupid idiots you fucking ignorant pieces of shit I'm actually a female and all this shit but then he explained more shit it would have been like okay this sounds like an intersex individual, but they want, but the male mind on this episode, so it's a trans intersex human being, so he, him. But it was the fact that, like, he continued to call himself a queer woman, a gay, a homosexual woman. No trans, non cis human being constantly refers to themselves as the sex they were assigned while they are still, while they are trying to present themselves in their correct gender that's just wrong and it would also because like Kafka would do the same shit where it's like forgot they were a woman he she and then like when they you finally meet the brother at the end they're like yeah my brother my brother brother sister oh, I don't know like you they kept bringing it up and it's like that felt like as someone who is queer non-cis it felt like that was born from a place of ignorance and the like the characters born from a of ignorance and the thing is Shima could have been a really interesting 
and badass LGBTQIA plus character, but it the way they were written was so offensive to somebody who is queer and not cisgendered, and I just I couldn't look past that. It just kept bringing it up, and I was like, can you like? That's so offended. That's just, that offended me. I was offended for Oshima. God. But I mean, I don't know. So it's like a three star. I don't want to repeat anything that I said before. Like, there was a lot of cool, interesting little elements. But like, I felt like the majority of my reading search was just waiting and waiting and waiting. And then things started to connect. And it was more waiting and waiting. But when things started to connect and you finally got like different answers or something, and or like, it was finally like the big moments of certain things. It was very anticlimactic and it was like, yeah, well, I don't really care, turns out. So there's that, that's my second read for the Mirakai Marathon, finished finally. There's only one day, I just have to, well, the rest of the day then tomorrow. So we'll see. Cool.